everybody. Thank you very much indeed, David. Um, great to be back here at the Red Cloud Fall meeting, um, and I'm delighted to be joined uh, by Pine, who is our in-country director down in Namibia. Um, now, I want to just draw your attention to the forward-looking uh, statements, particularly because actually we got some really exciting, we think, um, uh, and hopeful uh, uh, strategic catalysts that we want to put in front of you today, um, which I think are going to propel our enterprise value significantly. So for those people who don't really know uh, Forces, a quick overview. Um, we're obviously an explorer developer. We've been listed on the TSX since 2007. Um, we've got a market cap of about 130, uh, though thoroughly um, undervalued, we believe. Um, and certainly from a uranium standpoint, uh, we're valued at about $0.67 per pound against the average of 3.37, I think it is, I believe. Um, we are, have we got a strong balance sheet um, and we've got no debt. Um, but the key thing is that we've got 100% ownership of some uh, phenomenal assets down in Namibia, uh, which come under the name of uh, the Narasa uh, project, uh, which include two uh, deposit sites. One is um, called Namipla and the other one is called Valencia, four and a half kilometers away from each other. Um, and uh, in 2015, even though in care and maintenance, we managed to get a, a DFS um, out, um, which the size of resource um, actually measured and uh, indicated was 115 million pounds and proven and probable. Uh, actually was about 91 million pounds, assuming a life of mine over a 15 year period. So really, really significant, um, uh, without any question. Now we have, um, uh, over the last two years, we've appointed um, uh, a team down there when the price started moving upwards, and we'll look at that in a minute, um, to actually reevaluate that DFS, which is now obviously quite old. Um, we have a fully permitted license on um, uh, uh, Valencia, uh, which goes to 2033, and we're just any day expecting our uh, EPL to be renewed on Namipla, which will then convert, when we've done a bit more optimization, into um, a full mining license. So it, we believe that you know, the re-evaluations that have been going on, there's significant upside, which is really very, very exciting. So we believe we're really in quite a good place. I mean, I, I know we've talked quite a lot about how nuclear is really moving forward and the charge is on. Um, and, you know, we've all seen the political um, awareness uh, improve and the thawing of uh, governments and reactors opening up and uh, new reactors being planned and so forth, which is all absolutely fantastic. And, but actually, you then encapsulate that into the supply-demand graph, which came out of the WNA, um, which is widening. And the only way that that's going to be filled is by new primary production, which obviously is where um, uh, potential mines such as uh, Narasa really comes into its own. Um, perfect timing. I mean, we're entering the bull market, um, and I know that's been mentioned quite a few times. Um, but you know, the very uh, the very fact that um, if you look at the blue line, we're we, we, we're at pre uh, Fukushima prices. Now, uh, obviously, everybody got absolutely hammered uh, during the um, period in between post Fukushima, um, and uh, you know, whether explorers, producers, developers. Um, and But forces made it fruit through, we carried on drilling, we did get the DFS out. But now we are in a position post-2021 where we're really coming uh, out and emerging, um, uh, or have emerged rather, and put the building blocks in place in order to uh, advance this project forward. Um, Namibia is one of the top uranium countries in the world. Um, uh, last year, it was the third largest producer of uranium. And in fact, over the last, um, let me just turn the slide over, over the last 45 years, it was the third largest producer. It's politically friendly. Um, it, it mining is their bread and butter, and they've been involved in it for the last sort of 45 uh, odd years. Um, it's taxation friendly, and they're very well regulated. So it's a, a very low risk environment. 
the fact that our uranium um, uh, reserves are so huge is really indicative of what we're talking about here today. If you actually look at the graphs, um, we're a fully permitted uh, undeveloped project so far, and that puts us pretty much the, the top um, uh, fully permitted project uh, in terms of annual production with 5.2 million uh, pounds per year um, and and also reserves, proven and probable reserves of 91 million pounds uh, per year. And that in itself puts us in a position um, of being ranked uh, ninth largest uranium mine in the world. And this of course is all based on the old 2015 DFS. We got a strong board and we got a strong uh, management team. Um, the board has a uh, huge mining and capital markets experience. Let me mention just a few people, Paul Matisek, uh, Martin Rowley, George Stepper, all of whom have bought and sold and built uh, phenomenal mining projects throughout their careers. Um, and but the, but what I do want to focus on more than necessarily the board is the team that's been put together down in uh, Namibia under Pine. Now Pine, um, uh, he won't mind me saying, um, but he ha is the real deal. He has um, worked on some of the biggest mines um, in Namibia, um, built them, done all the studies on them. Uh, he's been working on the Rossing mine, on the Husab mine, on the Langerfield mine. And so the enormous experience that he brings actually to forces is, I think, adding enormous credibility to us having boots on the ground in Namibia doing this re-evaluation process. Finally, and I'm not going to dwell on this because it is old, the 2015 DFS, but it was compelling though. The financials that came out of it were huge. Um, net revenues of uh, $5.2 billion, um, an MPV, a net MPV of $623 million, an IRR of 32%. So significant numbers. But again, what I do is say that that's old DFS and we are re- uh, doing all of the uh, DFS, re-evaluating it, which um, we're going to talk about in a minute. So where does that leave us? And uh, we came out of 2021. Uh, prices were beginning to move upwards. Things were looking, they're heading in the right direction. Uh, we re-established the um, strategy of the company. Um, we then uh, reorganized the board. We did a financing um, through our friends at uh, Red Cloud and Canaccord uh, in a bought deal. Um, and then the most significant thing, we recruited Pine and his team uh, to get on with it, which is exactly the time I'd now like to hand over to Pine so he can tell you all the exciting stuff about what's been going on and actually what are the strategic catalysts um, that are gonna drive us forward. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, David. Um, good afternoon. <clears throat> okay, so um, I think we've put an excellent team together in the sense that they can, it's all people that's been involved in the uranium industry for many years. It's a team that I've built projects with. Um, and this is really one of the companies, uranium companies in the space at the moment that's got a team that is actually build, develop, and, and execute uh, projects, uh, which puts us in a, in a great position to really add value uh, with the experience that that team brings in the uranium industry and to position forces, you know, to, to move forward this project. We've got a clear uh, work stream and work plan with updating our DFS uh, towards uh, Q3 next year. Um, we've spent quite a bit of work uh, over the last um, 12 months in preparing various trade-off studies, and uh, I'll, I'll dig into those details, which sets us to, to update our DFS uh, by Q324. So we've got the two large open pits. We are uh, doing some additional optimization work on, on the mine designs. For that, we needed some geotechnical drilling. We're doing some uh, resource infill drilling, as well as some uh, metallurgical samples that's uh, subject to various uh, test work. So um, some of those results will start coming out uh, earlier in the new year. 
and then we'll hopefully update our mineral resource statements and our, our uh, mineable resources. So I'm going to skip that. I'm going straight to our um, heap ledge project. So what we've identified, the previous 2015 DFS was based on a tank leach, uh, pretty much a copy-paste uh, um, sort of a flow sheet from the Rossing uranium operation. We believe as a team that that's no longer uh, a valid um, a flow sheet, and we've started to do the, the trade-off study and the test work to evaluate uh, heap leach as an alternative to tank leach. Um, we are basically on the verge of uh, finalizing that trade-off study uh, before the end of this year. Early indications shows us that we're going to see significant capital savings um, as well as reduction in operating costs and substantial improvements in environmental related matters. Less power, less water, less risk of building tailings dams um, and you know um, uh, some of the stability issues uh, around that. So we're very excited about that. We do believe that you know, we're going to offset some of the, you know, cost increases that's seen from the 2015 period and that we will still try and keep our um, all-in-one cost, you know, below the, the 35, you know, to 30, 30 dollars per pound level. We're very blessed uh, in Namibia with uh, substantial supporting infrastructure. We're 25 kilometers off the main rail line and highway running east-west in Namibia. We've got excellent power infrastructure. We don't have blackouts. Um, we've got a 25 kilometers uh, connection point to, to the main NAM water infrastructure. So we're very comfortable with uh, infrastructure support and the location of our project. Our project, as uh, Richard has indicated, is fully permitted and licensed. So literally this project needs to have an updated DFS, financing, and then we can move on in production. So there's nothing stopping this project to be one of the next first uh, uranium producers in Namibia, well-positioned jurisdiction for uranium production. Richard has touched on our uh, valuation. You can see we're sitting way down on the valuation curve. Um, I mean, uh, this project has been in care of maintenance for quite some time. We've recently re-established the team. We've done a lot of work uh, in the background to try and optimize the, the flow sheet, the economics, and set the, the stage for the updated DFS. We're at the point where we're going to start to see significant news flows as those results are coming out. We know the uranium price is moving up. We are undervalued. We offer significant investment opportunity at this point in time. And uh, this is definitely a space to watch over the next six to eight months. So what is our corporate strategy? Um, over the next six to eight months, we want to update our uh, DFS issue an updated uh, 43101 technical report. Together with that, have significant news flows as we build up to that. Hopefully the uranium price will continue its upward trend. This will put us in a significant revalued enterprise that will lay the foundation for us from there to determine our execution strategy um, to move the project forward. So that will determine how much own capital we've got what combination of you know debt or equity partners and offtake uh, arrangements we do. So we are talking to various interested parties, both on offtake, both on investment. Um, but at this stage, the team's focus is to make sure that we get our own house in order, set our own foundation from where we can move early in the new year and move the project forward. And I think that basically wraps it up. I mean, we um, at a point where we are probably positioned as one of the uranium projects that will get out of the blocks earlier than most other guys because of the good work that was done in the past and the fact that we are fully permitted and ready to move. Thank you.